Hey everyone, my name is Alphas and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use MATLAB to predict the time series sequences in time series data. Well, uh, there are lots of methods to predict in time series data that I can uh, divide them into the classical method and modern method. Modern method like decision trees, uh, fuzzy method, neural network, and etc. But in this video, I'm going to talk about and I'm going to focus on predicting time series data with the neural network and various type of neural network like uh, conventional neural network, long short term memory, and multi-layer perceptron. So let's get started to see how is the functionality of various type of neural network of predicting time series sequences. Okay, before we get into the code, I wanted to briefly review the time series forecasting process. Uh, in machine learning, one of the main requirements is to build computational model with a high ability to generalize well the extract knowledge. Appropriate data splitting is part of this process. There are several sophisticated statistical sampling methods exist, but one of the most common methods in this area is dividing data to two set, train and test in serialized manner. Um, the process involves taking data set and dividing it into two subsets. The first subset is used to fit the model and is referred to as the training data set. The second subset is not used to train the model. Instead, the input elements of the data set is provided the model. The predictions are made and compared to these expected values. The second data set is referred to as the data set, the test data set. So, train data set use to fit the machine learning model and test data set used to evaluate the fitted model and the objective is to estimate the performance of the machine learning model on new data they do not use to train the model this procedure has one main configuration parameter which is the size of the train and test sets this is most expressed as the percentage between 0 and 100 for easier to train and, the, and test data set. Um, there is no optimal split percentage. You should choose a split percentage that meets your project uh, objective with consideration that include uh, computational costs in training the model, computational costs in evaluating the model, training set representative entire of your data set and also test set should be representative as. Um, anyhow, common split percentages include uh, train 80%, test 20%, train 67%, test 33%, and train 50% and test 50% of entire of data set. Some machine learning algorithms will achieve better performance if your time series data has a consistent scale or distribution. After splitting data to test and train set by machine consideration, it is better to map data to a new scale. Actually, two common techniques that you can use to consistently rescale your time series data are normalization and standardization. A normalization is a scaling technique in which values are shifted and rescaled so that they end up ranging between 0 and 1. It is also known as min-max scaling. And standardization typically means rescaling data to have a mean of 0 and standard deviations of 1 or unit variance. Uh, the question is which one is better? Normalization is a good technique to use when you don't know the distribution of your data or when you know the distribution is not Gaussian or bell curve. Whereas standardization assumes that your data has a Gaussian distribution. This does not strictly have to be true, but the technique is more effective if your attribute distribution is Gaussian. Uh, well, I think the best way to understanding the answer is use trial and error. You can always start by fitting your model to normalize 
and standardization method and then compare the performance for the best result <coughs> like deep learning normally can't be used for time series forecasting uh, before machine learning can be used time series data must be reframed as a suitable supervised learning problems uh, in other words the data should be kind of input and output format we can do this by using previous time step as input variables and use the next time step as the output variables this, pro uh, this preparation technique is a sliding window. The use of prior time step to predicting the next time step is called the sliding window method. For short, in statistics in time series analysis, this is called a lag or lag method. The number of previous time steps is called the window width or size of the lag. In, uh, in this figure, we see the axis of time and its response. In our case, there is three variables which are the responsible for the value of the t time now we can see the effects of the sliding window the next pair of input output that the model would have for finding the mapping function is obtained by moving the window one time step to the feature and the process are uh, same as we did at the previous step this is sliding windows is the basis for how we can turn any time series data set into a supervised problem. Here is another intuitive example of how to reshape time series data to a suitable uh, input output format. In this example, I use delay 1 and 2 as input and use third variable as target. As, uh, as we can see, the lowest delay value is our prediction horizon and the biggest value is how much we lost from the beginning of data set so in this example we reframe our time series data such that gives us one step ahead of data after preparing data to a suitable shape for machine learning we move to train our model and uh, then after training our model Similarly to a standard supervised machine learning problems, we use the model on unknown data points, which in our case are future time periods. So ultimately, we want to predict the future. The number of time periods to forecast into the future is usually referred to the pre prediction horizon. Uh, there are several strategies to achieve multi-step ahead prediction, but I'm going to show you two more common methods. Direct prediction strategy. Well, the direct prediction, prediction strategy uses different models for each time steps. More especially, each model is trained using as target the time series shifted off the desired number of time periods into the future. Imagine, for example, that one wants to train a three step ahead prediction model. In this case, we should build three models, which first model should predict first sample, second model should predict second sample, and third model should predict third sample of future. The direct method outlined above does not generate error accumulation at each forecast, but it has larger computational cost, making it not suitable for large forecasting horizon. Moreover, it cannot model statistical relationships among predictions since the model used for each time step are independent. On the other hand, the recursive prediction strategy uses only a single model to train for one step ahead forecasting. At, uh, at each forecasting step, this model is used to pre uh, predict one is the head and the value obtained from the forecasting is then fed into the same model to predict the following step exactly similarly to a recursive function hence the name and so on and so forth until the desired forecasting horizon is reached the recursive strategy is the least expensive method for forecasting since it's used the same model however it is not the best strategy for long time horizon um, since it's, it accumulates forecasting errors at, at, at um, each step, this problem arises because previous forecasts 
value are used to build the future space for the current uh, step. Um, at a glance, we can compare both strategies side by side. On the left, recursive strategy, and on the right, direct strategy shows the goal is a prediction of three steps ahead. Um, well, this is a combinatory approach. Hybrid or combination approach exists. This strategy makes us of both recursive and direct strategy, similar to the regular strategies separate models are created for each time period in the forecasting horizon with the difference being that the size of the sliding window kept on increasing for each step. And similar to the recursive strategy, the forecast generated in step 1 is fed into the second model to generate the forecast for step 2 and so on.